Hello there. This video is talking about the new grab maps for the Panorama P series that I have made available to you. You can see scrolling up the screen quite fast the VST devices which support the new grab maps over 2200. There should be more however hit on a few technical issues that need resolving and I think the issues are on the reason side and I wanted to get to you what already had working and resolve them issues uh, probably in the new year but of course if they are really reason related uh, don't hold your breath on that one. Do know I keep referring to these new mappings as grab mappings so these mappings are not like our usual fully mapped out devices and in Tim's from Nectar's last update of the mappings where he made a few pages mapped out and he also made use of the new grab functionality for those mappings my new mappings don't have anything mapped. Why? Well, as I said, there's over 2,200 maps and it would take years to start even mapping out a few pages per map. So it's purely to give you the ability to grab the controls you know, of your current VST just to try and help with your, your workflow and speed things up. I've also limited um, my mappings to the first thousand parameters or controls per device. You know, to be fair, most devices are well below the 200 parameters, and some only just have one or two uh, parameters to grab. But there's a you know, there's a few devices out there which have way above a thousand, um, and the current mapping file is over half a million lines, you know, long. It's getting out of control, hard to manage it. So I had to put a cap on that. So let's pull up a VST or a, a rack extension. In fact, I'm actually going to go and pull up a new rack extension which is just being released by uh, Strop Music and it's one called Poltergeist. And let's actually have a look at the panorama display itself. I'm going to just pull up a patch so we can see it just change on the display. It's a very basic display you know we've got a version number there and that's purely for my reference nothing to do with nectar versions number or anything there's a fader button a knob button and a random button I'm going to quickly talk about the random button first it works for the main encoders that's to the right hand side and um, obviously for the P1 users that they'd be on the top and for the faders it doesn't work for the knobs directly above the faders, which I refer to as upper encoders, and it doesn't work for the buttons either. Okay, The fader button, this will bring us into a view of where we can see our upper encoders and our faders. And we've got a toggle view button which will bring us into that, or there's a toggle mute. So if I hit toggle mute now, I can see my buttons and faders. Toggle view switches the view between upper encoders and the faders. And of course the knob button just brings in the view of the main data encoders over this side. Now it doesn't matter which view I'm in, so I could be in this view here or this view here, I can still move my controls on the rack extension and I can assign them to the knobs over here. It doesn't matter that fact I can't see them. And also if I wanted to, I could grab 32 controls at the same time from the, the VST or the the rack extension and I could go around and twiddle and move all the, the knobs and everything appropriately to map it out at the same time. So let's go ahead and if you haven't ever done the, the grab functionality it's very straightforward you just hold down your shift key on the on the panorama and you just twiddle a couple of knobs on your rack extension let go twiddle a couple of knobs and I'm just going to change my fade of view so we can actually see them. So now you can see I've now got control of the cutoff and the reso over there. Um, which is absolutely fine. As I said from here, I'm gonna hold down my shift again, say, and change, oh, let's do octave, so it's something, something quite different. And then over here, I'm gonna twiddle, and now I can change the octave, yeah. And if I hit my fader button, make sure I'm in toggle mute, it sort of tells me. Now, admittedly, the, the labels are not brilliant because it's just saying OS1, which doesn't really mean anything, but obviously, I do know that's OS, oscillator one for the octave. 
the fact that we're actually grabbing the controls, the labels to me, uh, it's totally irrelevant. You should really remember what you are grabbing, but it is nice for quick reference. And obviously in the main encode of you, it gives a lot better label of what you really are looking at. Now, one of the things you can do with the grab um, feature is you can grab the same control and map it to a fader, upper encoder, to your main codes, all at the same time. So I might be over here playing around with my cutoff and my reso, and all of a sudden I'm playing live and I want to do something with my octaves. And my cutoff at the same time. Well, it's quite straightforward. I can hold the shift, I can change my cutoff, twiddle the knob over here. So now I'm now doing the cutoff over here and I'm doing the octaves over here at the same time. Okay, they're on two different knobs, but the fact they're next to each other, I can use obviously control at the same time. Whereas before, if I was here, I'd have had to come over here, and it's obviously breaking the workflow. Let's just very, very quickly pull up a, a VST. I'm going to go for a freebie one because uh, I know I haven't mapped that one out before. Problem with a lot of my VSTs and my rack extensions, I've actually done four mappings on them. So, same thing applies. Um, oh, the other thing I, I want to quickly mention at this stage is even though I've deleted that poltergeist and it's no longer in, in this session, if I pull up a, that, another poltergeist, what I've mapped out, it will remember. Yes, yeah, so it's for that session. And you've got to remember all these grab maps are first session so as soon as you close reason down you've lost what you've grabbed um, yes it would be a lovely feature if we could do some grabbing and we could really save them that might happen in the future you never know so same principles apply exactly the same just hold down the shift key I can twiddle several things at the same time and then I can just come along and it's just assign these and there we go so we've got control of them one of the things I have noticed that we can't seem to grab at the moment are, are the buttons. So anything that's got a button on it, we should be able to grab. But, you know, um, it's just not, we just can't seem to grab it. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at the installation of things. There is a, up on Reason Talk, I do hold a page which would look very similar to this and uh, it will be available so you can obviously read this this and I put it in the description as well of the YouTube video there's going to be a Dropbox site which you can go to and you can just um, simply download the files so up on Dropbox you've got the panorama um, remote map which is for the P4 and P6 users and obviously you've got the panorama P1 for the P1 users and it's a case of just dragging that file and copying it to the appropriate location depending if you're on Mac or PC. I've got the locations here uh, already written out. Um, I think for PC users it's a lot easier. I think for Mac users you have to do something a little bit funny. I don't own a Mac so I don't know but I believe you have to do something funny to actually get to this location. Some kind of admin mode or something. Um, and it is a case of just dropping them files off. Um, if you haven't been to the Nectar site for quite a while do go there, do get the latest mapping from there because it actually updates the codex. It's not just updating the mapping, there's a codex file it's updating. Um, if you just download my file and you run it and you happen to hit on an error, let's just let's pull up some of the mapping files. And if you happen to hit on an error and you happen to be going through it and it's and the line number refers to anything which has map plug in view, that does simply mean your codex is out of date. So do go to the Nectar site. Do download and just do their install, and then you can just come in and override, you know, overwrite their mapping file. If you are going to back up the mapping file, which obviously is a recommended thing to do, don't just back it up in place. I think I've got a note about that on the installs here, um, because I've had issues where I I did call it a slightly different name. Again, I think I gave it a different date, and when I was changing some mappings, it was clashing. 
you know, and so I was, I was making some changes that it just didn't seem to take effect because it was reading some data from this other file. But at the same time, when you try and use it to your ability, i.e. hold different files, it doesn't seem to work. So just be wary of that. So copy it out to a completely different directory if you can. I believe that's about it. Sorry that it's a bit of a long-winded video, but it's that straightforward. And as I say, then you can have your, your grab functionality for all them VSTs. If you're interested in getting a VST or another rack extension fully mapped out, I have got a video out there to have, have a quick look at, which is called Helping Us Helping You. You don't have to know anything about mapping. It's all about setting things into banks of eight, and you can send us a file, and we can actually produce the map file for you. Um, and make it available to the community. Okay. Okay, well thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.